Hello there, my name is Anton and today I'm going to be going over how to cut the perfect airfoil for your wing. Now if you clicked on this video, you've probably already tried cutting an airfoil and it kind of turned out to be really wonky, or you're just getting into it. Either or, it's a bit harder than it seems from the videos on YouTube. I'm going to show you how to cut the perfect wing of any shape or size. Now I split this video into three sections, preparation, execution and finishing touches. We'll go over every section in really deep detail so you can see how it's done. Now first off, you only need one of these. I'm using the spark cutter that I built myself out of PVC pipes and a wooden dowel. At first this uh, version wasn't really as good for cutting, but now I added this wooden dowel right here and an nylon string that I can also tension whenever I want so I can make this uh, wire really really tight. And that's the key for cutting the perfect wing. You want your t wire to be as tight as possible. That's your key of getting it straight. Because the longer your wing is, the more distance there's going to be on the wire bowing it in and if it bows too much you're going to have a lot of curvature in your wings and, you, and all the warping that you don't really want. One of the biggest benefits of these types of cutters with the string is that you can insert like a stick here, twist it and it's going to pull the string making this wire even tighter if you're working with bigger wings. Now once you find your airfoil on the airfoiltools.com you'll print it out and cut out this piece. This is what most of the tutorials will tell you to do but this is wrong. Thing is, on the very back of your wing, on the trailing edge, see how it gets thinner and thinner. The problem with cutting foam with a hot wire is that it actually penetrates through the foam. So on the very end here, you'll have the section overcut. So you'll have it shorter than you need to be. That's why I recommend adding this extension right here, about two or three millimeters from the thinnest point. And then you go around three or four centimeters from here and you add this fin right here so your wire doesn't slip out of it so it's easier to guide it in. This will make sure that you don't overcut your foam and you can also trim off the piece and send it down so you have the exact length you want. Now of course it's way easier to make the wing of two same airfoils when you have the same length throughout the entire wing but for my project I'll be using two different size airfoils. These are the same type of airfoil by the way, it's just scaled down. So when you're scaling down your airfoil, also you want to make sure you keep the scale so you have the same consistent shape throughout the entire wing. The only thing you're really changing here is the length and the height should change itself. It's way harder to cut tapered wings or maybe like swept back wings with this technique, but I'll show you how to do it and it's going to be really easy. Now for the sake of an example, I cut out these two 16 by 16 centimeter pieces and you might ask me, why am I going to be using two pieces? For such a thin airfoil, even though it fits here, you can see it actually perfectly fits. It's better to cut your wings out of a thicker piece of foam. That way you can make sure they will come off nice and straight without any curvatures or unnecessary burns on your foam. Also what I did here, I marked my channel for the spar. Now if you're making a foam wing, you might as well exclude a spar. Here I'm going to be using this uh, wooden dowel here just so you add all the structural strength. Generally you want to go from the thickest part of your airfoil to the thickest part of the airfoil. Obviously this is going to be a tapered wing so it's going to go like that. So we're going to have the thickest parts in the same place basically, which is good. You want to cut out this channel to the size of your dowel just so you can fit the, the spar in. This is going to be crucial for your wing stability and strength later on. You can do it in many different ways. Use a precision knife. I'm going to use my hot wire. Okay, let's power on our hot wire. This is a 90 centimeter section of the hot wire. I'm powering it off of a 12 volt, 5 amp power supply, and this is a 20 gauge nichrome wire. You wanna make sure your temperature is right for cutting the foam. The way you can make sure, take a scrap piece of foam, put it here, and what the heck? You wanna make sure the thing is on. So when you put the foam to it, you can see how it slowly cuts through it. And you can also adjust the temperature of your wire by sliding these contact pads around. You want to make sure they always touch the, f the wire so it actually has the power. So now I'm going to take my piece and I'm just going to go through it like that. You can see I actually aligned it the way so it's perfectly aligned to my table. I'm just go like that. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Or it actually fits in. Something I would recommend actually using like a guide piece. You will cut out of wood too so you can guide the wire through it and have the perfect cut. As you can see here, we have a nice channel to put our spar into. Also, after every single cut, even such a small cut, you always want to make sure to clean your wire. That's gonna assure its longevity and workability in the long run. 
Now to glue these two pieces together, I'm going to be using the 3M77 glue. It comes in the spray. That stuff is great. I really wish it was in the bottle because it works so well. I would use it everywhere. So I spray down one of our pieces. Give the adhesive some time to dry. And then we put it on. Now as you can see, it's a little bit dried, so a piece of foam actually tacks onto it really well. So now we're just gonna put it together like that. Now you wanna weigh it down with something. I weigh it down with a piece of rig that I kindly borrowed from work. And now we wait for around three to five minutes for it to grab. While we're waiting, I'm gonna spray down our airfoils too, just so we can glue them onto the piece. You'll see why. Now if you have your center line on the airfoil, which I really recommend you guys do, I'm gonna align the center line with the seam between the pieces right here. And I'm using these wall tap-in screws. They actually work really well and you can easily screw them in, just like that, see? And they hold real nicely. So when you're done with the other side, make sure to kind of press them together. I'm also using all the other pieces of the brick just so they actually tack and glue onto the foam. But especially worry about the trailing edges, so press them down first. Don't really worry about all the other side. On each side of your airfoil, you want to split it into 10 equal sections. This will increase your precision dramatically. This piece is ready to be cut. I know it took a lot of preparation, but this will be perfect at the end. I also just trimmed a little bit here, just so you have those tails sticking out, so you have the space for them. And the leading edge too, so there's uh, approximately the same amount of space between the end of the leading edge and the end of the foam the game plan if you will see the markings that we made you want to you want for your hot blade to enter the marks at the same time and to leave them at the same time so you always want to be looking at it and making sure that it's going in and leaving the marks at the same time by splitting the entire wing into small marks is way easier to monitor the position of your blade and way easier to make it nice and straight because basically the concept of this is that your your wire goes in at the same time from both edges and goes out from both edges at the same time. But it's really hard to monitor, so these markings really help. Now I'm going to position the tails towards myself, put something underneath it, weigh it down. It's really important to weigh it down to make sure there's no warping in the wing while you're cutting it. Now you're ready to make the cut. So you use two hands, you go from behind. You want to go really slow about it actually. and Make sure you see the markings that you made for yourself. So I'm gonna put this brick right here. So yeah, make sure you see the markings that you make for yourself. That's gonna be your visual guide. You can see I'm putting the wire into those little tails that I made. And we're gonna start cutting. You wanna drag it slowly. Make sure it enters at the same time and exits at the same time. That's your most crucial part about it. And of course, there's gonna be some really faulty wings at first. You're gonna advance even more. I feel like I'm going too fast here, so let's slow down a little. Again, keep control of your markings. Make sure they exit and enter at the same time. If they are not in sync, make sure to speed up or slow down on either of the sides. Right here, I'm coming to the edge and I'm cutting it too close on the front one. Well, there I am. I was on time. And now I just cut down, basically freehanded, and boom, there we go. Now you always want to make sure to clean off your blade so it doesn't get too contaminated with all your residue from the foam. And you can open it and see how nicely it turned out. I mean, there's some errors over here and there, but that's because I was going too fast. Now you put it back, make sure to align it nicely, you flip it over, just like that. Do the same thing with the markings on the other side. And now you're ready to make your second cut. I'm splitting it up into two cuts. Some people will say continue from the leading edge, but I don't really want to do that to be honest. I like it more when I can do both sides. I guess if you're doing a bigger airfoil, it's nicer to do so, but for this really small scaled one, you don't really want to be doing that. So now just drag it along, nice and slow. If you feel like you're String, if you feel like your wire is bowing too much, just stop. It has the tension, it will straighten itself out, and it's actually going to go way faster once you stop and give it some time to heat up again. At that point, my camera storage ran out. Anyways, we remove this plate and we check it out. As you can see, the cut is pretty nice. We did go a bit through 
with our spar so you want to make sure you're cutting it at a certain distance from here. It doesn't look really good right now but once you send it down and finish it off it'll look really nice. You want to make sure you don't cut it too close with the spar. Huh. Just a tip for the future. Because we did the spar hole on uh, the bottom side so the bottom side was much thinner. If we were to do it on the top side it would be just fine. Oh well. Also I want to trim down your airfoil to its true size to your plant size because since we added the extensions it made it a little bit longer than we were supposed to. So just trim it down to its true size. And you can see the trailing edge is a bit square but that's what we're going to be sending it down for. Paper and you send it down. Now after we finished it up and send it down it looks real nice. Of course because of the seam right here the other piece of foam was too thin to handle it but it will be just fine if you're cutting bigger wings maybe like thicker wings. Also the spar hole kind of came off a little wonky because we again put it on the bottom side then uh, rather than the top side but it will still work as a spar hole especially after you cover it with something and it will be real nice. Now as far as covering with the tape goes you really want to start from the trailing edge. I did a mistake here, I started from the leading edge. The reason you want to do it is because that way you eliminate that step and it's not going to disrupt your airfoil as much. I would also use something like laminating film instead of the tape but for now we can just use the tape, it'll work out just fine. So now as you can see this airfoil is really really smooth. It actually reflects the light off of it, that's how smooth it is. And also this, uh, and also this tape made it much stronger than it was before without the tape on. In the proper case scenario I would use laminating film, the thermal one, but I don't have it at the moment. Good from now, this pretty much concludes the tutorial, but I personally don't like this color. I like having all the freedom and variety in my colors. So, I will sand down this entire area and we're gonna paint it. I'm gonna show you how. Sand it down, you can see it's not really as smooth anymore. It still reflects light, but it's more of like a matte texture. And it really feels like foam to the touch now. So now you wanna grab your can of white primer, give it a nice shake for a minute, and we're gonna paint our wing. I'm painting on my garage, just make sure it's well ventilated. And go with light overlapping strokes like that the entire area. Just make sure not to get any paint runs. We're gonna go with two layers. So don't really worry about covering the entire thing right away because there's gonna be more. Now let it dry. Look how nice it looks now. It's nice and shiny again. It's a really nice and smooth surface and most importantly it has a nice spar and a perfect airfoil. thing that many people don't realize about this technique is that it's a very scalable so you can use the same tips and tricks on any size of, of the wing on your plane. So I really recommend using primer for the first layer because whatever paint you put on next is gonna stick really well and it's gonna stay there for a long time. I found this method to be really nice for cutting out perfect air folds for the wings. But the biggest disadvantage of this method is that a lot of foam goes to waste. Look how much foam we're wasting from each wing. But I figured out a way to recycle this foam. I'm gonna show you how. This is the bonus tip. For, so for this technique, you take your wooden dowel, I'm using a quarter inch uh, thick dowel, break it in half, just like that. A piece that's at least as thick as your dowel, and you align it like that. You need to make sure your dowels aren't moving anywhere, you press the dowel bricks, and then you also put another brick on your piece of foam, just like that. Make sure nothing is moving. And you just drag it along like that, and... A very satisfying sound. You can go a bit quicker if your wire allows, because it doesn't really matter how quick you're going here. It doesn't matter anymore. The only thing that matters is that you're dragging it along these wooden dowels like rails, like your guide rails. You can see now from all of this struggle, you got yourself a recycled piece of foam of half inch thickness that's going to be perfect for your applications. Now it's a little bit curved to the side right here, but I'm going to show you how to fix it side creates tension. So what you want to do, you want to sand it down to release all the tension. So you can use it for any application on your plane that you want. In fact, I had so many pieces of recycled foam from all the failed attempts on my wing on my previous plane that I built the entire fuselage and the tail out of them. So that's it. If it was helpful for you, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. There'll be more videos like that, especially with building planes out of uh, this technique and using the same technique for my other projects. There's going to be a lot more cool stuff on this channel and I hope you're here to stay. See ya!